Okay, so you're a dividend investor, and even better, in my opinion, you like to sell covered calls on your positions. And you're doing your thing, you're collecting a ton of cash flow every month, but now you've got a situation. One of your dividend stocks is approaching or has zoomed past your strike price, and you're not sure how to handle the situation. In this video, we're gonna talk about three fundamental strategies for the average Joe cash flow investor for how to manage your covered calls when they go in the money. <laughs> All right, so we're looking at my portfolio right now. And as you'll notice, we have quite a few covered calls active in the portfolio. And one of the things you're gonna notice here is that some of my covered calls are being tested right now. ExxonMobil has just been blown up right here. We've got Whirlpool Corporation. T. Rowe Price here is very close to my strike price. And we've got SCHD right here, which is also relatively close to my strike price. Remember that when we're selling covered calls, if the price of the stock does not reach our strike price, then we don't need to take any action. The covered call is going to expire worthless. In fact, the perfect scenario would be a dividend stock that does everything possible to reach that strike price, but falls just short. Though in reality, we know that that doesn't happen very often. So specifically, when we have a covered call that is approaching our strike price, has gone in the money or has gone deep in the money, meaning that the price of the stock has gone way past our strike price, what do we do? Here are the three fundamental strategies. Number one, you can do nothing. And when I say do nothing, what I mean is if at expiration, the price of the stock is above your strike price, you're going to get assigned, meaning your shares are going to be called away from you. When this happens, your 100 shares will be sold at the strike price. So if the price of the stock is 75, but you have a strike price of 74, then you will sell your shares at 74. Now this may not be a problem for you. Maybe you don't want to hold that position anymore. Maybe your goal is to just buy right back into the same stock. Maybe you wanna move on to a new stock. Now, some things to be aware of when you allow yourself to get assigned on these shares. If the strike price, meaning the price you have to sell at, is below your cost basis, you are going to be selling for a loss. Now this in and of itself might not be a problem either because if this is in a taxable account, you're getting a tax benefit for doing this, especially if the goal is to move your assets into another investment or for some other purpose. Okay, option number two here is we can close our position, meaning buy to close. When we start at the beginning and initiate a new covered call position, we are selling a covered call to somebody else. They're buying it and paying us the money. So that new position is known as selling to open. So fast forward at some point in the future, if we want to close our option, we can do it by buying it back or the opposite of selling to open, which is buying to close. Now, when you are buying your option back, the goal is to do this by buying it for a price that's less than you sold it for. So for example, if you sold an option for $100, the goal would be to buy it back for less than $100, that means you made a profit. However, in this type of specific scenario, right, where the option has gone past our strike price, more than likely it's going to cost us more money to buy it back, which would be a loss. Let's say you sold a new option for $100. Fast forward a week or two weeks or a month or however long the expiration was, the market price for that option, if it's in the money, is probably going to be higher than $100. So if you sold it for $100 and then you bought it back for $110, then you took a loss of $10. But the benefit here is you get to keep your shares. You don't have to sell them. And that might allow you to now collect a dividend that you otherwise would not have been able to collect because you were having to sell your shares. Strategy number three here is known as rolling the option. When I say roll your option contract, what I mean is you are at the exact same moment buying back your existing contract and selling a new one. I think the best way to look at this is with an example. Let's take a look at T. Rowe Price in my portfolio right here. I have an option that's actually expiring in about five or 10 minutes here, so I better hurry. It's a strike price of 114, expiring April 14th. And the current price is $113.19 per share. Now, this option is probably going to expire worthless, but for the purpose of this conversation, let's say this was at $114 exactly right now. I have the ability in Fidelity and any other brokerage really to roll my option as opposed to buying to close. If we go to roll, it brings up this new order form right here, which is saying, hey, you're going to buy to close, meaning close your existing position and simultaneously open a new one, sell to open. Now there are a number of ways to do this. First off, I can choose whether or not I'm going to roll to the next expiration or even further out here. I can go way out here if I want to, all the way to January of 2025. Generally, when I look to roll, I try to roll one to two weeks out at the most. So right now, my current expiration is April 14th, so I would roll to potentially April 21st. When we talk about rolling an option with respect to the expiration date, we talk about rolling out, meaning to a further expiration date. So let's say we go to April 21st, which is one week out, meaning that I would be simultaneously buying back my existing option at whatever the market price is, and then selling a new option at a new expiration date and a new strike price. 
So I could just do April 21st and make no other changes, meaning I could go right to the $114 strike price. What you see here is the current market price for my existing option, as well as the current market price for the new option if I wanted to sell it. And then it tells me, based on both prices, here's how much I can collect as either a net credit, meaning I'm collecting more money, or a net debit, meaning I am paying money in order to complete this action. So in this situation, when you factor in the current price here, and the current price to buy back my existing option, I can just choose to roll this option out one week at the same strike price and I would collect somewhere between $120 and $155 per contract. Now above and beyond rolling out, meaning to a later expiration, I can also roll up or down with respect to my strike price. Meaning that instead of rolling just to 114, which would be pretty aggressive, I can instead say, not only am I gonna roll out one week to April 21st, but I'm also gonna roll up to a higher strike price, making it less likely that my option will get assigned next week in seven days. So I could say, instead of selling at the 114 strike, I could sell at the 116 strike price. And you'll notice here that the market price has changed. Now I would collect somewhere between 50 and $75 if I wanted to roll out to the 116. When I go to a strike price higher than my existing price, that's known as rolling up. If I wanted to roll to a lower price for some reason, I would roll down. Now, some of the benefits of rolling your option. Number one, you're avoiding assignment, right? If you're right on the cusp of getting assigned, I feel like the best strategy is to roll your option to a further expiration date and potentially further out so that you avoid assignment hopefully next time as well. Now let's look at my transaction history and look at a rolled option that I recently completed earlier today, Whirlpool Corporation. I had an option that had a strike price of $132 per share. However, today was April 14th and we were trading at 133, 134 per share, which if I had done nothing, my option would have been assigned, which may or may not be a problem depending on my strategy, my cost basis, etc. However, I chose to roll my option. So at the time I rolled my option, you'll see there's two transactions here. Number one is the buying to close of my existing covered call. Remember, when we start a covered call position, we're initiating it by doing a sell to open, which means that the opposite of that would close my option, buying to close. Here was my initial covered call position with Whirlpool. On the 10th of April, I sold a new covered call for a credit of $50 and minus out fees, it'd be $49.31. So I collected $49.31. Now going back up here to the rolled option, you'll notice that the price, what it cost me to buy this option back was $192.68. It was a market price of $192 plus a commission and fees of 68 cents. So I initially collected $49.50 and then to buy that option back to close my position, it cost me $192. That was a loss. But I immediately turned around and sold a new covered call at the exact same time. Here is the credit that I received for selling immediately a brand new covered call. Okay, so just for starters here, remember we initially collected $50, and then we had to buy back our option for a loss. We had to subtract $192. We'll just keep the fees and commissions out of it for now, which means I was operating at a loss of $142. However, immediately after buying my option back, I sold a new one for a net credit of $242. So then I would add $242, which means that I collected net $100 when you factor in all three transactions, the initial covered call, buying it back for a loss, selling a new option for a credit. However, if we forget about the first initial covered call, let's just look at the credit here we received for rolling the option. It cost us minus 192.68, right? That was a negative. We paid $192.68, but we immediately collected at the exact same time, $241.31 net, which means our net credit was positive, $48.63. And in this situation specifically, I initially had an option expiration, of a strike of 132 expiring April 14th. And what I did is I rolled out one week from April 14th to April 21st, and I rolled up from 132 to 133, which hopefully makes it more likely that my option will expire worthless in a week. So being able to roll the option is a benefit because we are avoiding assignment for sure, but we're also continuing to own our shares and collect dividends and hopefully being able to sell more covered calls because we've put ourselves in a better situation now than we were in previously. Now, looking back at my existing positions, you'll notice that right now, SCHD, I don't really need to take any action because I've still got a week until it expires and it's still below my strike price. 
though I may need to take action on this one next week. Starbucks is in the money right now. Starbucks has rallied quite a bit, and so it's above my strike price, right? My strike price is 103 against my current price of 107. However, I'm not taking any action on this right now because number one, it doesn't expire for seven days, but number two, it actually becomes very difficult to roll an option once it's deep in the money. And I would classify this one as deep in the money. It's $4 higher. Let me show you what I mean. If I go here and I go to roll the option. Now I could choose to just do nothing here for a week and then just see if it expires in the money or not. And then I would either get assigned or the option would expire worthless. Though at this point, it, the odds are it's gonna get assigned. Or I could buy to close. But if I buy to close, I'm gonna have to pay market price right here, $4.75 per share, which is gonna cost me $475 when I only initially collected $382. So that would be a loss of approximately $100, or I can roll. However, if I roll the option right now, when it's deep in the money, we've got some problems. Let me show you here. We've, first off, we've got seven days left, right? And the current price is $4.67 per share, right in between here. If let's say we wanted to roll out to the April the 28th, okay, one week later. And just at the same strike price, $103 per share. Sure, I can make a credit, right? That I can make a credit of between $20 and $50 for this option, but it's the same strike price. It doesn't really benefit me much. And if I were to go try to roll up to 104, well then now this option that I'm selling is worth less than the, ex the existing price of my option, which means I'd have to pay money, net debit of $50 approximately in order to roll this option just to 104 and that still puts me quite a bit of ways away from the current market price. So if we're going to roll an option, the best time to roll is when we're approaching or right at the current strike price of the option. If we wait too long, and to be honest with you, sometimes I wait too long and then there's not much I can do because I'm just hoping that the price is going to come back down. If we wait too long, then the ability to roll doesn't make much sense. And buying the option to close can get pretty expensive. So depending on your strategy and depending on the current stock price compared to the option strike price, it's gonna dictate which of these three options make the most sense for you. Sometimes the best strategy is just to do nothing and hope the price comes down, and if not, you get a sign. Sometimes you're kind of forced into that situation as well where it's now so far in the money that it makes no sense to buy it back way too expensive, and the ability to roll, there's not really an ability to do it for any type of credit. Sometimes it's best to just buy the option back, especially if we're approaching the strike price and the price you can buy it back for is less than what you sold it for, AKA, that's a profit. Or perhaps you don't wanna get assigned and you don't wanna deal with rolling it and the cost to buy it back is very comparable to what you sold it for, or the cost is just slightly more than what you paid for it. And then third, what I like to do, if at all possible, is roll my option and continue to collect more option premium. Hopefully you found some value in this video. Make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. It's my goal to respond to all comments left on the day I post a video. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching.